I'm down here by the Yay River at the old Providence gold mine. It's just right here behind me here. You can see the tunnel. It goes under the road. And once upon a time, there were hundreds of men here searching for gold. And they're not here anymore because there's, well, they stopped searching. Maybe there's still gold here, but they never found it. They found quite a lot, but it, it ran out. It reminds me of the search today for truth. People, just like those miners, look for the glint of true gold. They didn't want fake gold. They wanted what was true. People today want to know what truth is. And everybody it doubts everybody else's truth. When we hear news, we say, is it fake news? We want to know what is truth. Reminds me of what Jesus said when he was up before Pilate. Pilate said to him, uh, are you a king then? Jesus said, uh, my kingdom is not of this world. And he talked about his kingdom, which is wonderful answer that he gave. And then Pilate said, um, so what kind of king are you then? And he said, for this reason I was born. And for this reason I came into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Now that's a pretty amazing statement by Jesus of why he came, to bear witness to the truth. Of course, Pilate didn't know what he was talking about and said, what is truth? But I think that in a way what Jesus came to do was exactly that, to reveal to us the truth. And we need it today. When I was growing up, back in the day when <laughs> this gold mine was active 100 years ago, you know, truth was a lot more certain then. We, were, we believed that when a scientist said something, it was true. We believed when a newspaper said something, it was true. But now there's a new skepticism around. It's, it's, it's Postmodernism has won the day. And postmodernism says, first of all, it says, history is told by the victors. What about the view of history from the point of view of the victim? There's a hermeneutic of suspicion. People say, is that really true? Or are you saying that because it privileges you in some way? We hear all this language all the time. And, uh, and so we get Black Lives Matter. And white people say, but there's no prejudice in our country. We're not racist. Or our prime minister said this week, there's no slavery in Australia. And the poor guy had to, you know, suddenly everybody's saying, of course there was slavery in Australia. And he had to defend himself stoutly, uh, saying, well, I was, he's talking about the establishment of New South Wales penal colony, which is true. There was no um, bringing or purchasing or buying of slaves. But that's how it's got today. Everybody who says something is challenged. But you say that because of who you are. You say that because of your biases. You say that because of your privilege. You say that because of your prejudice. And so we have to struggle to try and find what truth is. Jesus, interestingly, <coughs> once gave three very important points about why we should believe what he says. The first one, in John chapter 7, verse 16, he says, My message, my teaching, is not my own. It comes from God who sent me. And part of the thing about Jesus being sent was that he believed that he was sent from God and that God had given him his understanding of the world, his perspective, his teaching, the things that he was to reveal, the truth that he had. As John the Baptist put it in John 3, he says, He's come from above. He's greater than anyone else. We are of the earth. We speak of earthly things. But he has come from heaven and he's greater than anyone else. He testifies about what he has seen and heard. But how few believe what he tells them. Anyone who accepts his testimony can affirm that God is true. For he is sent by God. He speaks God's words, for God gives him the spirit without limit. So what Jesus is talking about is something he knew when he was with God, presumably before he was born. He speaks from God's perspective. Now, we live on a little blue planet a long way from anywhere. And it's so wonderful to think that the God who created the whole cosmos cares about the way we live on this blue planet. He wants us to live in a way that will be effective, that will be prosperous, that will be worthwhile for all the creatures on this planet. That's the perspective of the one who sent Jesus. He wasn't concerned about maintaining power for the powerful. He wasn't concerned about establishing one nation above another. He wanted a kingdom that didn't come from this world, 
but that came from above and that would be for the good of all. And so he had a, an amazing perspective. The second thing he says, anyone who wants to do the will of God will know whether my teaching is from God or is merely my own. So he says, you don't really understand it unless you know where he's coming from. Now, this postmodernists would love this. But he, and Jesus is saying, you won't even hear what I'm saying unless you're on the same page. Unless you have a desire to do what God wants, then you won't be in agreement with what I am saying. So he's saying that if you also want the best for this planet, if you also want to do what's best for the kingdom of God, which comes from above and is for the best administration of the life on this planet, if that's your desire, then when you hear what Jesus says, it'll resonate. You'll say, that makes sense. That's true. That, that's, I agree with that. And part of what Jesus did was to expose those whose interests were not for the good of the planet. For example, back in chapter in the same chapter, verse 8, he says, The world doesn't hate you. He's talking to his brothers here. He says, But it hates me because I bear witness that it is evil. When Jesus walked around and spoke the truth about God, he re it revealed who was with God and who wasn't. Those who were religious people but were more concerned about establishing their man-made rules and reinforcing their position of power in a, in a religion. Those who, like the Roman government, who were interested in their own power and couldn't contemplate a kingdom built on love, they, of course, were not interested in what he had to say. It didn't suit them. And so he exposed them as being the sorts of people who would put an innocent man to death and torture him simply because... He was not of their world. He was not of their way of thinking. He didn't follow their will. He followed the will of God. So he says, if you want to know what I'm really saying, you've got to understand where I'm coming from and you've got to share a similar passion for the truth and for God. And the third thing he says, which is very wonderful too, he says, those who speak for themselves want glory only for themselves. But a person who seeks to honor the one who sent him speaks truth not lies. See, it's about who you're doing it for. And this is exactly what postmodern people say. The postmodern people say, you know, you can't trust scientists anymore because they're only working to get another grant. You know, who's paying them? Who are they speaking? Who's, whose honour are they seeking? You, you can't believe, uh, you know, a, a politician because they're only trying to further their own cause. And Jesus is saying, you wouldn't believe me if I was just here to make myself a hero. You wouldn't believe me if I was just here to, to, to show that um, I want every, as many people as possible to follow me. He wasn't a populist. He wasn't trying to get the crowds. In fact, he knew that the crowds would not accept him. But those who did receive him, to them he gave the power to become the children of God um, and to be born again. And so it's the motivation for why he was speaking. He was just speaking the message he'd been given. He was an ambassador revealing the truth. Now, you and I are sent out as ambassadors for Jesus, as the Father sent me, so send I you. But we're not speaking like he was. We're not revealing what God has shown us. We're revealing what God showed him and what he, we learned from him. We're at a different level to what he was. But how do we find truth today? How do we find truth in church? How do we know who to believe? I think one of the things we have to do is to get out of the bubble and learn to see uh, other perspectives to see that where our perspective lies so for example um, you know imagine you live in a house and uh, you've got a leaking tap and it begins to form mold and pretty soon there's is mold quite a bit of mold in the house and it, it, it's a quite a distinct smell after a couple of days you won't even notice it you'll go in and out of the house and you, your nose will be accustomed to it and it won't register that smell anymore but someone new comes in and they go wow this house smells like mold but you've got used to it, you don't smell it. And it's like that, we get stuck in our little worlds and we hear the same nonsense all the time and we begin to believe it. We think that's the only way to look at the world. That's, that's the full truth. Um, and, and that, of course, it can only be changed by hearing other people's perspective, by hearing truth from other places. So that's why I think it's important to be in community. That's why we need to be in a group, a church, that is diverse, that has a range of people with different perspectives. And we need to learn 
to listen to each other. I think we also need to have a look at ourselves. I think postmodernists are right when they say, are you speaking out of a place of privilege? Are you saying things and believing things that reinforce your position in the world and your advantage in the world? You need to have a good look at yourself and say, if I'm wrong about this, am I prepared to face the truth? And the third thing is the way we listen to each other, the way we hear people with different perspectives, it's got to be gracious. There's only one thing that will save the world, and that's love. And when we live in a community of different people, different perspectives, different gifts, different understandings, we're not going to agree with them all. But if we love them, we'll listen to them. And that will help us find the truth as we share together the insights that God has given us. I believe in truth. I believe in finding verifiable facts. But I don't think I can find them on my own. I need to listen and learn and read and especially be open to follow the will of God. I want the best for this planet. I want the best for this community. I want the best for all the peoples of the world, all the creatures of the world. If I share that passion for the will of God, then I'll be able to hear those who also want the will of the one who sent Jesus. And then we might find the truth together. Are you open to the truth? Are you open to the truth that exposes who you truly are? Part of the truth of God is that we are sinful and corrupt people and we easily get led astray. And we, can, we need to understand God's condemnation of that limited view of thinking about ourselves. We also need to understand God's forgiveness because of the cross. I hope that you can learn to find truth about yourself, about the world, about Jesus, and you will come to God and follow him. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus. Thank you that he was a witness to the truth. And thank you that as we follow him, our eyes can be opened and we can understand this world you've placed us in more truly, more fully, more faithfully, more wonderfully. I pray that you will open our hearts to be your people and serve you in this world. Amen.